Welcome to Studio Jakarta E. Today I'm having a community chat with uh, Reza. And uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Reza Rahman. In my day job, I'm Principal Program Manager for Java on Azure at Microsoft. Uh, so basically, I help take care of uh, Java developers in general, but most certainly uh, Jakarta E developers are near and dear to my heart. Uh, outside of my day job, um, I do a bunch of speaking, uh, blogging, and I help found the uh, Jakarta E ambassadors. So I've been involved in uh, the technology formerly known as Java E and J2E and on Jakarta E for a long time now, almost, almost 20 years. Yeah, and, and the Jakarta ambassadors, they, they used to be the uh, Java E guardians, and That's then right. you changed the name. Yeah. yeah. So in uh, on November 20th this year, it's actually just in a couple of days, Jakarta E9 will be released. And uh, what does this release mean to you? And what's the significance of this release? You know, it's very, very important. Um, the reason being that uh, you know, for us, uh, it is, it's been a long time dream, frankly, um, not for, not just for Java, e, but in fact, for, for the Java platform in general, for it to be moved to a vendor, truly vendor neutral space, uh, you know, where it is not really controlled by any particular vendor and there's a level playing field for end users and, and maybe even large companies that, that use these technologies to have uh, like a, 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 an independent stake. So, um, you know, you really need no strings attached in terms of IP control, IP flow, the decision making and so forth, right? So Jakarta E8 definitely was an important step in that direction because it, it represented the technology transfer. But if you really look at Jakarta E8, it still has IP hooks uh, into Oracle, namely copyright hooks, right? Because at the end of the day, the namespace is still Javax uh, and Java at the end of the day still remains a Oracle copyright. So with Jakarta E9, you're really breaking away from all of the strings, right? You're, you're breaking away, uh, certainly the code has been donated to the Eclipse Foundation. There's the Eclipse Foundation specification process, you know, that's independent, much more independent than, than the JCP, but you also are breaking away from the copyright hooks as well, right? So by moving to the Jakarta EE space, now it is really truly exactly what, you know, what it should have, maybe even in the, uh, from day one, is truly a vendor neutral technology that doesn't have any of those vendor specific tie-ins whatsoever. So for me, uh, Jakarta E9 makes it real, right? In terms, of, it makes the, the real transfer from uh, the JCP real. And who knows, maybe we hope maybe that happens for the Java platform itself someday. Yeah, so, so uh, you mentioned the namespace switch and, and that is the, the big thing, or the, we discussed whether we should do it in a big bang or whether it, we should do it incrementally uh, to, uh, to do the change. And we, we landed on doing a big bang approach. And uh, that has, it seems to be positive uh, when you talk to people about it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, this, uh, from, from my perspective, and certainly the Jakateri ambassadors had a consensus view on this, and the consensus view was, in fact, in favor of um, of uh, you know a, a big bang you know one time switch over in, into a more technology uh, uh, friendly and uh, more independent uh, view of things. So you know we we didn't come to that uh, conclusion or position by accident. You know we had a, a number of polls. We asked we asked as many people as we could. We had internal discussions amongst the leadership uh, as much as we can, and yeah, it was near unanimous that everybody really wanted this to be a one-time shift rather than always wondering about, okay, what, when, which technology is gonna move over its namespace when, right? That, that could have potentially been extremely messy. So I think this was definitely the right direction um, and the right decision in the end. Yeah, and, and also the, by doing a names change, we also really kind of uh, finalized the transfer step and, and now we're on our own legs. Mm -hmm. so with the new namespace, nothing is stopping us for, from doing anything. Right, precisely, yeah. And, and also the, the nine release has been, you, you said the, the um, eight release was just to finalize the technology transfer, uh, didn't bring anything new to the table. And apart from the namespace and some other small changes, nine doesn't bring anything either. But, but that was also chosen 
in order to ease the migration for the the uh, vendors and the users of the technology so they wouldn't have to think about other things than the namespace well i wouldn't quite put it that way frankly speaking um you know this was a humongous technology transfer and and a code transfer when you look at it uh, all in all all the artifacts this is well in the millions of lines of code right you know you know in terms of thinking about its magnitude and in terms of it, its industry i don't think there's ever been any precedent where a technology that is fundamentally not really an open not really uh, that vendor neutral becoming vendor neutral and so foundational to an in, entire industry this has not happened before right so that has taken a lot of time and effort so it's uh, it's important to recognize that and in, in fact it's important to recognize oracle's role uh, in making uh, such a transition possible. So I think Jakarta E8 has its significance in terms of uh, the code transfer. Jakarta E9 has its significance in terms of uh, really enabling uh, vendor neutral innovation. So, uh, you know, we should take due credit where it's due. I oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, obviously, you're very involved in the Jakarta E community, and you probably have some tips to people who want to get involved. How should they get involved with uh, with this release and uh, upcoming releases and in the community? How, how do you start contributing? There are many ways. Um, and, and there is no way that is big or small. So uh, if you look at the Jakarta Ambassadors website, um, there is a getting involved section that outlines all of the various ways that people can, can get involved. Um, in addition to that, we've been uh, creating in the Jakarta Ambassador specific guides. Uh, so we had one to help drive uh, involvement in Jakarta E9. We're now drafting one uh, for what we believe uh, is going to be, is, should be scope for Jakarta E10. So those documents uh, give you specific guidance on, on how you should be involved, uh, all the way starting from just being an observer, uh, signing up for mailing lists, uh, beginning to get involved in the conversations, uh, voicing your ideas on what should be done and what the priorities are. Uh, all the way to helping implement uh, the changes themselves and implement uh, implementation changes or TCK changes. So all of those are out outlined in the guides. Uh, I've shared with you the recent, the, the current draft of the Jakarta E10 guidance. We can talk about a bit more about that. But mm -hmm. to keep it uh, short, honestly, the easiest thing, one of the easiest things you can do is just follow the Jakarta Ambassadors uh, Twitter handle. We do, a, I think, a decent job of keeping people up to date with what they need to be up to date on and what the opportunities are for them, for people to step in. Uh, and also, yeah, check out the website, check out the getting involved section, and that will tell you all of the different ways that you can get involved. Uh, everyone, uh, you know, that cares about this technology set, which we hope is a majority of Java developers, has a way of getting involved, even if it's something very small, right? Even just retweeting a tweet is, is involvement, is engagement, is help. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's a good point. And uh, you mentioned the document that the ambassadors has put together. And uh, uh, what features do you have as a kind of a favorite, uh, or what you would like to see in future releases? So we, we've ha we've been having this conversation for a while, right? So none of this, uh, you know, the thing about uh, this is that, that we carry a long legacy. Uh, so there's a number of features that, uh, you know, a number of people that are still in the ambassadors and active, you know, we've had in our mind for a while, right? So all, these are all carryover items from uh, Java E6, Java 7 Java E8 timeframes, you know, things that either were not prioritized or things that just uh, there wasn't sufficient time to take care of. Of course, on top of that, there's things that uh, you need to do in order to keep up to pace with the industry itself. So at a, at a high level, I would say, you know, in the document, we outlined the high level themes. The high level themes are CDI alignment. Uh, so uh, a big ticket item would be moving uh, all of the items that are currently in EJB in uh, somewhat dated APIs. You know, all of those could be modernized uh, using CDI and moved into appropriate spaces like uh, Jakarta concurrency or security or, uh, or what have you. Right? And, and, and those kind of uh, modernization messaging is another one, big one. So moving the MDB model, making it more CDI friendly uh, and making a generic CDI based listeners in, in Jakarta messaging. So those would be one arc, uh, one theme of, of work. Uh, another theme of work is Java SE alignment. Uh, you know, uh, I think we need to move, we have been moving away from this thought and we need to further move away from the thought of thinking about it as only a platform. 
Uh, it is a platform by no means, and it is a platform concept important to many, but it also is a, is a set of technologies. So uh, there can be further alignment along the lines of Java SE, right? So in other words, uh, you know, decoupling the specifications, making them available, standalone and bootable uh, uh, in a Java SE environment. So the kind of thing that we've seen with CDI2, uh, you know, that could be applicable to other places as well. So messaging is one candidate. Uh, JaxRS is another candidate where uh, you can introduce decouple the specifications from the platform and make them available in a C-based environment. So that will make it, you know, uniformly uh, available in many different places like Micronaut uh, or uh, Peloton or, or what have you, right? As, as soon as you make that bridge, a lot of possibilities open up. Um, there are some places where further alignment with Java C8 is possible. Uh, so one uh, good examples of this would be making use of completable features in Jakarta concurrency. Uh, so you know some kind of managed alternative to completable future, the completable future API inside of EE environments. That's another big one. And there's other odds and ends like that. So. Uh, you know, that are my, more like minor feature releases. So for example, adding support for uh, OAuth, JWT and OpenID connect uh, in the security API is a small grain maintenance feature. Uh, there's some potential improvements you can make uh, for the persistence API in terms of making uh, JPQ a little, a little bit more powerful, uh, possibly including multi-tenancy. Uh, making a more lighter weight version of Jakarta messaging so that it can interoperate with uh, Apache Kafka, potentially uh, defining active uh, uh, or other, uh, 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 I'm forgetting the acronym for it, but basically a, a better interoperability for Jakarta messaging for other, other type of environments that are potentially non-Java non specific. So there's a number of these smaller grain uh, maintenance items that are also outlined in the document. Um, that all are all sort of holdovers from uh, from all of these other prior releases that we couldn't quite get to. Yeah, and and uh, in later discussions in the platform project, uh, we have kind of come up with that that we will open up for doing uh, minor releases of the platform, and and whether it will be a major or minor will be decided by the content of the release. So if a specification does a a major update and it's included in that platform release that will bump it to a major version. Um, and, and also uh, what content of a release will also be dependent on what the individual specifications do. So, so if you're interested in some of the features that, uh, that you mentioned here today, then the best way would to be to refer to the ambassador's document and then contact the specification team that is and help them make that feature and make it happen mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly right so i think uh, at this point <clears throat> the important thing is to get get the innovation moving right so I, i'm not uh, that much concerned about release cadence and you know major release versus minor release i, I think the important thing is to begin to show that uh, this is an evolving platform because it really, other than the namespace transfer, there hasn't been any technology changes per se, as you said earlier, right? So I think it's important to begin to make those things uh, happen. I think uh, there's some talk about 9.1, but in the end, 9.1 is simply going to be saying that, uh, okay, yeah, this platform is supposed to work with Java SE 11. Um, well, to be honest, majority of the uh, of the runtimes already do that, right? So if you look at, uh, you know, Payara or Open Liberty or, uh, or Wildfly, they already support Java SE 11. So it's really not anything new other than simply saying, yeah, officially the standard supports it. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, the innovations and, you know, the major stakeholders and the community working together to begin to make those happen. So I'm hoping at least uh, one really major release a year, right, whatever the contents may be. I think the more important part is having those releases than uh, necessarily what the specific content is going to be. Yeah, that's a good point. And that means we need to, uh, uh, anyone who is interested in contributing to some of their favorite features is to reach out to the project team and contribute, and then we will get there. That's the objective of the of the document, yes. Uh, so as soon as we finalize it, uh, which hopefully we'll do by, by November, uh, really the it's a call to action more than anything else. It's uh, telling people, hey, you know, the least thing you can do is 
go ask questions. It's like, okay, this is a this sounds like a great feature. You know, when are we going to work on it? That's that's the that's a very simple thing you, anyone can do, or just enter a, a, a bug report to say, oh, you know, I'd like to see this enhancement in the in the specification. That's where the dialogue starts, and of course, as people's interests and capabilities, uh, you know, allow, you know, they could maybe help implement some of those things as well. Yeah, that's ex excellent. And uh, I thank you very much for having this chat and look forward to the continued support and cooperation. And let's make uh, Jakarta E uh, the, the great technology that it uh, deserves to be. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and, and that doesn't happen with just uh, one group of people. So we all need to be involved in uh, making sure that happens. Yeah, uh, but thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll talk soon. Yeah, see you soon. Okay. Thank all right. Great. Talk to talk, see, see, see you folks out there soon.